back, I was going to go ahead and create our application profile now. So we'll just go ahead and jump right in. We're in the same timeline as before with the, the BGP. So we're going to just go ahead and jump right into it. And again, I don't really want to use the wizards at the moment because um, they kind of confuse me more, frankly. <laughs> so we'll just go ahead and keep doing all this manually. And this is going to be an EPG that I'm just going to use for the ESX management on a couple couple servers I've got in the lab at the moment. So obviously we want to associate it to the bridge domain. Um, we don't want to do this right now because we're going to go ahead and do that outside of this the wizard thing. But so effectively in this we're just giving the EPG a name and hooking it to the bridge domain. Nice and simple. And then we go ahead and create our EPG here. We go ahead and give it a consumed contract. We're just going to go ahead and consume the common default and that's a permit any any bidirectionally if you were wondering what that was all about. Um, so I'm guessing right now we're going to have to jump into paths. So pat the static bindings for leaves is kind of crazy. It seems like that li links it to a whole switch. So I'm not sure you want to be doing a whole lot of that. Uh, but we're just going to go ahead and deploy a static EPG here. And this is on port uh, 102146. Go ahead and pick that. We're just going to leave the only 100 here. And it's actually a tagged port. Oops. That should be good. There's not a whole lot to that. So let's make sure we see what fault we've got here. So this is giving us invalid path. And I believe when this happens, when we don't get hit to the AEP, I'm not sure where that happens. Yeah, and so, so when it's saying it's an invalid path, let me just back up real quick. Um, can I figure that out? Uh, so when we're getting this error, it's a little bit nebulous. It's not super helpful. It just says, hey, you've got an invalid path. And the recommended action says, hey, you should probably check it, the, the, the path to see if you fat fingered it or something like that. Uh, so that's not, obviously not super helpful. But effectively from this one, I'm, what I'm able to kind of get out of it is that we're saying that this port, Ethernet 146, is an invalid path. We know that we're in this tenant, we know that we're in this bridge domain. Uh, so basically that, that to me leads me to, well, is that physical port hooked to this tenant? And is it hooked to that AEP? So the AEP is, is a kind of the container for all of these physical things. So we jump down to domains here, and we say what domains we want to associate with. And since we're just using a physical port, we'll go ahead and use our physical domain here. Submit that. And that's effectively hooking that EPG into that domain. So we might have a, a VMM domain in the future. We will obviously, uh, but for right now, since we're just using the physical boards, we just need to make sure that we know to tell that EPG to use that AEP. So if we hop up here, cleared our faults. That looks good. Um, so now you can see in the catalyst switch that we're connected to on the outside, we've got our four prefixes, and that matches the four subnets that I've got set up here in the bridge domain. Enough. And we'll hop over here to our uh, little ESX box and into the CIMC port. Obviously right now we're able to ping 255.1.1, which is the default gateway for this particular management port. And then also 8.8.8, .8 so that looks pretty good. We can go here and verify on our catalyst we're getting obviously those prefixes. I've got the quad zeros piped into BGP here so that we can send it to the fabric. If we wanted to verify that the fabric was in fact getting that, we can go to fabric and interface and hop down. We'll just pick on the spine here. Protocols, BGP. And since the spine's not participating in BGP for this VRF, we weren't going to see it in there. But see, as we can see right here, We've got our BGP default route. This is a it auto generates the loop back in there, and then this is our router link that are auto also put in there by by default. And since we're connected to on our layer three out, we're actually connected to leaf one. Let me go ahead and verify that here real quick. Go down to network. 
working in a small bit network. We can look at our logical node, which is where all of our interface stuff lives. And we can see that we're connected to 101, so we've won. And then if we hop back up to there, the EPG, we're actually connected to loop two, so node 102. So that way we know our internal fabric BGP policy is working. We're getting the routes redistributed all the way across the fabric and we're pinging out to, to the Googles, to the inner tubes. So everything's looking, looking a-okay.